Hi friends, welcome to Nina Yoga Now YouTube channel. If you're looking forward to start your yoga practice, you're in the right place. I'm Nina and I'm going to guide you into a 40-ish minute class where we will learn how to modify yoga poses so you can improve your flexibility, range of motion and strength in a safe way for your joints. So you definitely will need blocks, straps and maybe pillows. Okay, once you grab everything, join me on the mat. All right, so let's get started. Here you can be on a easy cross, no cross at all, or if you want to be on a butterfly position, soles of the feet together. And if this feels too much on your hips, you can at first use your blocks, any height of your blocks, right? Something that you can keep some nice stability and allow your hips to open and sink. Sick bones are grounded into the floor and then slowly close your eyes. Allow yourself to focus on just your breath. Living or letting everything else out of this mat. Any conversations, any to-do list, any thought that might come in, just let it go. On a big inhalation, try to lengthen your spine, crossing your sit bones and bring your crown of your head all the way up to the sky. And on the exhale, relax your shoulders back and down. A few big breaths here. Maybe letting the air pass on the back of your throat. Inhale. Feeling the chest lifting. And on the exhale, maybe just side out. One more time, big inhale. Inside out. Next inhalation, open your eyes. Bring your arms overhead, elongate the spine again, reaching for the sky. And on the exhale, drop your shoulders back and down. Next inhalation, left hand will try to reach for the right knee, and on the exhale, right hand will reach back, giving a nice twist. Try to not lean back, keep your spine straight up to the sky. Inhale, arms lift, we'll just come towards the side of the mat so you can see. Exhale, twist, switch it out. So don't let this happen. Try to press from the sit bones, really lengthening and squeezing your shoulder blades. Inhale, arms lift. One last time each side. Exhale, twist. Inhale, arms reach. And exhale. So we're slow on those breaths, trying to feel how your body is on each movement. Inhale, arms lift overhead, and exhale, reach for the floor, and bring your hand, your hands forward and your feet back into a tabletop position. From your tabletop position, and do want you to pay attention on the alignment, shoulder and wrist in alignment, index fingers facing forward, pressing from the knuckles, hip, and knee in alignment. The feet can be pointed, the toes can be tucked in, whichever feel most comfortable for you. On a big inhalation, we're going for a cow pose. So tailbone come out, belly reaching for the floor, squeeze your shoulder blades and eye gaze up. And on the exhale, cat pose, tailbone under, belly squeezing towards the spine and shoulder blades reaching up to the sky, eye gaze between your knees. Inhale to squeeze all the back body and feel the front body lengthening. And on the exhale, squeezing all the front body to feel that back body lengthening. One last time, big inhalation. Try to feel the movement, the strain from the pose and also the stretch. And exhale, cat. Next inhalation, back to neutral spine. And you might want to try this out if it's the, you're a beginner. You bring your blocks right where your hands were, okay? So you still have that shoulder and wrist in alignment, hands grounded into those blocks and it's better if it's cork block just because it 
it gives you better stability on the wrist but again you have this nice alignment spreading the fingers really pressing the knuckles and from here tuck your toes and lift your knees out of the floor try to keep your back really straight really flat just like if you have a cup of water and you're balancing feeling that strain from the shoulders pressing the floor away so the shoulder blades are coming towards the side so you have that protraction of shoulder blades now as slowly we'll push our hips back and high you can keep the knees bent if that feels good for you and you're really strong on the shoulders so the shoulders now come close to the ears and now slowly try to straight your legs it might not happen to straight the legs and that's totally fine so remember stay where your body allows you to straight but you do want to be strong on the shoulders so shoulders close to the ears big breath in remember that cat pose the shoulder blades are coming towards the side so you feel that strength on the back body the belly in and the tailbone out so if you can see this we will bring the tailbone out in the belly in no matter if you have the knee band or the leg straight so here out or knee bend and out okay so you want to focus on feeling the stretch on your low back all the way towards those upper glutes now slowly try to bring your feet together in the center light of your mat or as close as possible i know it requires a little flexibility on the side of the legs your right leg will lift so first bring on the toes on the floor you can keep the knee bent if you need to that doesn't matter so you can be on the balls of your feet and slowly lift the leg up try to keep your hips squared strong here now bring it down again just feel the mobility and the strength of this pose up and down now you will understand why we are using the blocks as you bring up bring this right knee towards the chest and you will be a little bit higher because the most the hardest part for most of people is bringing the knee towards the chest and stepping the foot between the hands because they don't have the strength or the mobility on the hips to push the hips high bring the leg in and step between the hands so the block will help you and allow you to do that okay so again knee to chest really strong pressing the hips high on the tiptoes on the other leg and you slowly bring the foot between your blocks drop the left knee into the floor and again if you need to use the blocks bring into your highest position so you can lift and obviously if it, you're working to flexibility your low lunge might look like this and that's totally fine that's why we do yoga right here this class we will focus mostly on the modifications you can do as you get flexible or if you're already flexible and just need to know the alignment okay so now square your hips so even if you're all the way tall square your hips try, try to tuck your tailbone under squeeze your glutes and feel the stretch on the front of your leg relax your shoulders back and down so if you need to use the blocks here are your brass best friends for this time and now this is the hard part too that I see a lot of beginners as you tuck the toes of the left leg is really strong trying to lift the left knee out of the floor and you slowly try to bring your weight forward okay so weight swing forward if you want to try this movement a few times trying to bring that weight forward and back and maybe use a little momentum as you really try to bring that back leg in but do whatever you need to bring those feet towards the front of the mat. They are parallel and they are hip width. So same distance off your hips. Relax everything, allow the chest to be heavy. Maybe hug on the side of your elbows and swing side to side. 
So a lot of people relate yoga to flexibility, but it's also a lot of strength as you will see today. On the next inhalation, I need you a flat back. So that means you straight the legs and you straight your back. So even if you need to be all the way tall, that's totally fine. On the exhale forward fold, you can let the legs be straight or if you need to, just soft bend and let everything fall. Spread your toes into the floor, feel all corners of your feet grounded and as you press with your feet away from your chest, inhale, arms reach overhead. Try to lengthen your spine, squeeze your glutes, your quads, your belly in, strong here on this mountain pose and exhale, hands into the heart center. Inhale, swipe the arms up. So always try to connect your movements to your breath. Exhale, slowly let everything fall into your forward fold, knee bend or leg straight. Inhale, flat back, use your blocks if you need to. And now the left leg will step back and left knee. So see how I use the block to support me through left knee drop. So as you drop, we'll twist towards the right knee. So you, again, you can use this block and reach up to the sky. And you can adjust the height of the block as you need. From here, try to keep your hips square forward. Don't let the hips twist with you. And the hand reach high. Now I slowly frame the feet. So remember, if you need to use the blocks, they will be on the side and framing your feet. Toes tucking in the back. Press first, so like, how, like that plank or really strong cat pose on the shoulders, lifting the back knee and try to work into that mobility. Press the hips as high as possible on the balls of your feet and bring it back plank position. So plank position helps her either on the same high or lower than the shoulders and you can also be with your knee on the floor. Okay, so tailbone under belly in, squeezing the shoulder blades together now. Slowly coming down into your chaturanga, this time all the way to the floor. You might release the blocks and bring just the fingertips on the floor so you understand the active Cobra pose. You have the legs straight, feet, toes pointing. Now press the toes on the floor, squeeze your inner thighs, squeeze your glutes, your kneecaps will lift out of the floor. And as you squeeze the back body, your chest will lift. Just a little, just to engage those back muscles. So you're not most of using your hands. Now you can place your hands on the floor, tuck your toes, bring to your knees first, and just press back into your downward facing dog. Shake it out. Remember to modify your down dog as you need. Next inhalation, feet coming to the midline. And left leg will lift. So remember, try to keep your hips squared, the chest squared. Use the blocks under your hands if you need to. Bring your toes towards the floor and lift again. Just feeling that strength on the back of your legs, squeezing the glutes and hamstrings, slowly lift again. This time bend the knee, bring towards the midline on your chest. So here, remember the, the goal here a lot of times is hard to pass the foot forward. Really try to press the hips, press from the balls of your foot, shoulders really strong here reaching for the sky and maybe you reach. If you don't reach, always use your block or help yourself, right? Just go with your hand, help yourself. It is a journey, it is a process. Drop the right knee and slowly come into that Anjaniasana, the low lunge. Inhale, arms lift overhead. So if you need, tuck the tailbone under, belly in. So you feel better, that stretch on the back leg. Relax your shoulders with focusing on your feet, hip flexors for now. Now you slowly hands reaching down. This is the second part that is hard, so we will work a little bit today lifting the back knee if you need your blocks all the way tall. This will help you a lot. You will swing forward and back. 
transfer 80% of your weight to the front leg as you come forward. Maybe just bring into the tip toes of the back leg. Maybe you just bring a little bit close that back leg until the point that you slowly find that range of motion, feet parallel on the front of your mat. Relax. Inhale, flat back. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reaching for the sky. And exhale, hands into the heart center. Inhale, arms reach up, squeeze your glutes, inner thighs. And exhale, slowly letting everything go. Inhale, flat back. And this time, right leg will step back. Right knee on the floor, twisting towards the knee. Try to keep your hips still square forward. Squeeze your shoulder blades, try to feel this nice twist on the spine. And now we slowly frame the foot. So same thing as before. Tuck the toes of the right foot, lift the right knee on the floor. Strong pressing the balls of the foot on the floor, the right heel forward, trying to lift the left knee and slowly bring it to the chest. And back into plank. So as you bring the foot back, you can be on your kneeling plank. Or full plank, feet are parallel, hip width, squeezing your inner thighs, squeezing your glutes, tailbone under, shoulder reaching for the sky. Really strong here on your plank, holding a few breaths. So if you're a beginner, it might not be that much for you to hold too much into poses, but that's what we say that where yoga starts is when you think that you cannot long, longer hold a pose is your mind working to strengthen your body. And next inhalation, shift your way forward, shoulder past the wrist, bend the elbows to slowly find the floor. Keep your hands where they are, point your toes, inhale, roll the shoulders, squeeze the shoulder blades, remember the active baby cobra. And for here, from here, if you want to try the upper facing dog, same thing, you're pressing from the toes on the floor, slowly keep squeezing the shoulder blades together and away from the ears, you press from your hands and really lift. So your knees are not touching the floor, you opening the chest, maybe tuck your chin to keep your neck elongated. Now tuck your toes, downward facing dog, shake it out. Feet together in the center of your mat. We'll lift the right leg up. Hold for a second. Keep the hips squared. Exhale, knee to chest. Step the foot between the hands or between your blocks. If you need to use your blocks to lift, we'll drop this time the left heel into a 45. And you slowly find your way up, really slowly trying to find the balance. Don't use the momentum on yoga. Keep your hips squared, tailbone straight down, soft bend on the front knee, trying to straight that back leg. What happens sometimes, we cannot bring the hips forward because we don't give proper room for our hips. So maybe you need to step your foot farther to the side so you're able to have them square. Okay, so this is the warrior one. Inhale, arms lift overhead. So always adjust for your mobility. Exhale, hands into the heart center. And now just move your hips and chest towards the side. Keep your knee facing forward where it, is, where it was. In the left foot, you might want to keep like it is or just bring straight towards the side of the mat, which will give a little bit more room for the rotation of your hip. Okay, so hip now is squared towards the side, just like your chest. Big breath here, relax your shoulders, and now try to sink a little bit. As you sink, make sure the knee and ankle are on the same line or back, okay? Never passing so you don't hyperextend your knee, and then it's not sore, nor sorry, right? Slowly straight your legs. So going towards the other side, your right foot will come towards the side of the mat and the left foot will rotate towards the front of the mat. Heel and heel in alignment on the line. And now squeezing the side muscles of your leg to keep your knee tracking the pinky. Tailbone under, hips and chest squared towards the side. 
try to sink a little bit more. And both legs are equally strong, really squeezing this back leg and squeezing the front leg as well. Now slowly we will lift the heel on the right foot and we'll have the high crescent lunge, which the difference between a high crescent lunge and the warrior one is just dropping the back foot in the 45 on a distance that allows you to keep the hips facing forward. The heel dropping down will just increase the stretch and the strength on your calf all the way to the ankle. Okay, as you try to press from the outer part of your foot towards the mat. Take a few breaths. Now slowly lift the back heel and just bring the back leg in. Bring your feet together, squeezing the knees together. Hip go back, tailbone under, straight down into earth, belly in, inhale, arms lift overhead. So maybe your range of motion for your arm is right here, and that's totally fine. Something to work on during your yoga practice, and slowly trying to, class by class, right? Trying to reach for the sky, refile back and mainly just keeping the tailbone under, belly in. And really feeling those quads, those legs starting to shake, and exhale forward fold, just let everything relax. Inhale, flat back, and exhale, left leg will step back. You can drop the left knee or stay high. You can use your block right here and then slowly twist towards your knee, okay? So really strong here. What you want to do though every time is try to work into pressing your hips high, engaging those abs, those low abs, and maybe not even using, sometimes just using the fingertips on your block, okay? And be more strong on the poses. Slowly reach your hands down, plank position. So this is what we call vinyasa. When you find a nice plank, strong on the plank, pass the elbow line, chanuranga, elbows in is our yogi push up, elbows pressing on the side of the rib cage, all the way to the floor, point your toes, squeeze the back body. Once you find that squeeze in on the shoulder blades and shoulders away from the ears, then maybe you press up. Okay, but don't relax. I see a lot of this going on. Be strong. Tuck your toes, hips back and high down or facing dog. As stronger as you can be on your muscles, engaging your muscles, safer it is for your joints. Inhale, left leg will lift all the way up to the sky, or maybe just enough to keep your hips squared. Knee to chest, remember, press from the balls of the foot. Work, 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 and lifting, lifting, lifting. Step the foot between the hands. Drop the back heel, warrior one. We've been here before. Take your time, square your hips. Press, try to press that heel, the right heel on the floor. And exhale, hands into the heart center, back into your warrior two. This time we will be lengthening our arms towards the side, so one reaching forward, one reaching back. Flip the front palm, so their left hand, and reach up and maybe back. So feel all the stretch on the side body. This is our sun warrior, or reverse warrior. But remember, sometimes we lift, just sink the hips again, try to feel that stretch. Squeeze your shoulder blades, so try to keep your chest square towards the side just like it was or try to twist up to the sky now slowly side angle bring the chest forward maybe knee to elbow and arms lift overhead sometimes this is too much for our hips it's your block right here okay now what you can work in here once you're using the block is instead of pressing from the block is trying to not use it too much. Again, fingertips, pressing the hips high, squeezing those glutes and squeezing the shoulder blades, engaging your muscles, right? Because maybe one day you might not need. 
and there is nothing about reaching for the food or for the floor. You might get a little flexibility, but you might compromise your joints. So it's better if you get the flexibility with the strength. Now slowly, hands towards the side, warrior two again, and just change your feet position. So straight both legs, left foot come in, right foot towards the front of your mat, soft bend on that front knee, strong on your warrior. And breathe. Remember to always breathe. Flip the palm, the right palm, and reach back. Give it a nice stretch. Watch out to not lift the hip with you. Try to maybe drop now the hip a little bit more. The, re the left hand can slide on the left leg, or if you want, you can come in towards the back or even give a bind on that right inner thigh. And try to, again, reach back. And now slowly, if you want to keep the bind, you can keep the bind. Keeping your chest square towards the side, side angle. You can have knee and elbow, you can straight and really keep yourself strong and you can use the blocks, okay? Try to drop your hip and make sure that both legs are equally strong. Now release your hands back to the warrior two, really strong. Hands come up and twist or come towards the front of your mat with your chest and hips. Adjust yourself for, again, that warrior one position, okay? So back leg is trying to be straight. If you need, always modify to be on the crescent lunge. That's totally fine. But bring your hips forward, relax your shoulders. One more big breath. And slowly reach down if you need to reach for the box and allow it to help you to bring your feet forward and forward fold for a second. Now you slowly flat back, big inhale, and exhale, let everything melt. Inhale, pressing the floor away with all corners of your feet, reaching up to the sky, strong here, and exhale, hands into the heart center. Bring your feet together, just like we were before, chair pose again, so big toes touching, and the heels just slide further. Inhale, arms lift overhead, and now slowly try to press your hips back, but the tailbone is under, so not squat position, tailbone down and pressing the hips back, trying to not arch the back. Now bring your eye gaze forward if that is good for you. Sometimes eye gaze forward or up can be a little bit challenged with the balance. Then you can just look down if that feels good for you. Now challenge yourself by squeezing your shoulder blades, trying to bring your arms a little bit more overhead and go a little bit lower on your chair. One more big breath squeezing those legs together, feeling those glutes. Maybe it's shaky now and it's slowly releasing to your forward foot. Inhale, flat back. And on the exhale, your right leg will step back. Just like we did before, you can use the block with slowly twisting towards the knee, reaching high. Raining out of the floor, really trying to squeeze, square your hips, but still belly in. And here we go. Okay. From this time, we we'll slowly bring the chest, keep the soft bend on the front knee, we square the chest and the hips down, we drop the back leg again into a 45, almost as we were into a warrior one, but this time, if you need, you come all the way up, hands on the hips, we'll straight the front leg, okay? So if you need to see, we have the hips square fold, the back and front leg straight. And if you want to add more, you can flex the front foot. Relax your shoulders, and now it's slowly hinge from the hips, reaching forward. If you need to bring the foot down again for balance, totally fine. Remember, always do you. And one thing that might, again, be helpful using your blocks on the side of the foot, but just remember, don't arch your back. 
Try to bring your tailbone out, belly in, elongating your spine and relaxing the shoulders away from the ears. Now eye gaze towards the big toes, straight down to keep your neck straight. One more big breath and remember always be mindful with your blocks if you feel them not much good for you to press down use another block use another prop sometimes chair using chair on both sides might be helpful just watch out to not be slippery now it's slowly soft bend on the front knee we will just switch side so now the right leg come forward left leg come back Keep your foot in a 45 and it's slowly coming up. Straight both legs. I like to start on the upper position, straight up to the earth, so I can square the hips, relax the shoulders, flex the foot maybe, right? And hinge from the hips. Because sometimes my flexibility can be just here. Okay, each day is different, respect the difference in each day. So if your flexibility is right here today, just stay here. Foot can be down and if it hurts your heel, if you're pressing too much on the heel, or it can just keep the foot flex. Again, engaging that core, really trying to bring the belly in and the tailbone out. The tailbone out or tilting the pelvis forward, it means that you're stretching, you're straightening a little bit more the upper glutes and your low back muscles. So you feel a little bit deeper to stretch. And it might not be as visible, but you will definitely feel a little bit more. Slowly release the foot and bring the back leg in, bend the knees. We'll switch it again. So this time right leg step back and just drop the right knee on the floor. From here, I do want you to pay attention on the alignment. You do want to have your hip and knee in alignment, okay? And you might, again, be all the way up. That's totally fine. But this time, we will work. You can point the toes on the back, so that's allow you to be a little bit more grounded. You will walk that front foot all the way forward, okay? So it's a half split, flex the through the left foot, and you can be just right here. Okay, sometimes this is where you are and you're already feeling the stretch on the back of the strong leg. Now, I don't want you to pay attention as I came back, my heel is not in alignment with my heart center. So sometimes what happens, we need to adjust ourselves, walk the foot so it is in alignment. Now, my toes are in alignment with my femur and with my hip, okay? And I have my chest facing forward. Now, if I have the flexibility, I bring my hands over the blocks, tailbone out, belly in, and that's where I am. Or I can walk the blocks a little bit more, which would be a little level up for flexibility, and that's where we are again. We'll add movements, and you might definitely want to have the blocks for balance. We bend the front knee, and we press back. Okay, so if you're working into splits, I will have a class coming just about to work into splits. From here, this is definitely something you want to work on, rocking back and forth with your hips, feeling the back of your legs on the front leg stretching, and also the front of the back legs as you press your hips forward, okay? Now let's switch legs. If you want to come into a standing position, feel free to do so. You can either just press from your blocks and just switch the legs. And again, you can come all the way up and start up. Hip and knee straight in alignment, then straight the other leg, flex the foot, find your balance. Sometimes you need something to, to be right around here. Sometimes a wall might be helpful to be touching the wall right on the side, right? Now, if you need your blocks, bring your blocks. Just make sure, again, the toes, femur, hip are in alignment. Press your tailbone out as you bring the belly in. 
and just work on that. If you have more flexibility, you can get a little bit lower on those blocks, each time a little bit lower. Sometimes you don't need blocks at all. So remember to always see where you are, as long as you're not arching the back or forcing yourself into something, just make sure it's a journey, right? I don't expect no one to a first time in class or a beginner few months starting and be doing all without modifications. Okay, now let's rock back and forward. So you press the hips forward, squeeze your glutes, and then slowly press back. Exhale, press forward, squeeze everything, and inhale, lengthening, opening the chest. Exhale. And inhale. Trying to keep the hips squared all the way through the movement. Now slowly, as you press back, bring the left heel forward and we'll be on the seated position, right? Just let everything fall back. Straight your legs, give a nice shake on those legs. We'll bring one heel in. I do have a link for side band tutorial, which you can click right here and go direct to that class. We're twisting our chest towards the knee. So right hand will bring on the side of the left knee and the left hand will reaching high. And now it's slowly trying to reach towards the opposite side. So you do want to keep both seat bones grounded. This right leg is straight and pressing down to earth. So you're feeling all that side stretch going. Should feel good here. So your chest is still trying to square towards that knee, even going down, okay? And remember your goal, it might be far from your goal, but at some point, maybe you're able to grab into your foot, keeping twisting towards the knee or towards the sky. Okay. Now slowly, the left hand will reach on the side of the left hip. If you need, use a block again, so you can keep yourself high. We're pressing the hip forward as we spin on the right foot. So now the right toes is down. We're pressing the hips forward, squeezing the glutes and open the chest. So we start feeling that nice squeeze on the glutes will help you stretch and open the hip flexors as well as our, your abdominals and all the way through the chest. And slowly coming down switch legs. So now the left leg is straight and the right leg is in. Inhale, arms lift overhead. Left hand will reach on the side of your right knee and is slowly coming towards the side. So the thing about being a beginner of yoga, a lot of people think that it's lack of flexibility, but the thing is some people that are starting yoga they've done gymnastics, they did a lot of other things, and they don't know yoga poses, okay? And there is a lot of alignments, details in alignments that will help you to not only improve, as I said, the flexibility, because someone that is flexible doesn't need much of flexibility, but they do need strong joints, right? A lot of yoga come as a yoga therapy, right, to improve joint or decrease joint pain okay so that's something that we need to keep in mind now it's slowly coming up so the important thing is knowing your options so if you don't need the block you place your hand right hand on the side of the right hip as you press your hips forward big toe now is grounded hand can reach up to the sky or you can back bend so now the left hand reaching towards the back as you press forward. So as long as you feel, a lot of yoga is not how it looks, it how it feels on your body. As long as you feel the stretch, as long as it's challenge you, right? Safely, without pain, you're doing right. Slowly coming down. 
and now we're crossing legs. Now the left leg will bend the knee. You can be right here in front of your right chin, or you can cross on the other side, as long as both sit bones are grounded. So either here or here. I will show on the side, so if you have the front in front of the chin, which is the first option, inhale, arms lift overhead, and exhale, you're trying to hug with your right hand, the knee towards the chest. The other hand reaching back. Should feel that stretch on the side of your left hip all the way to the glutes. Relax your shoulders. And now, if you have your strap, that may be really helpful, we will straight this leg. So sometimes we straight the leg, the leg can, can stray too much and you're trying to grab something, it hurts the shoulders and the strap will be really helpful passing on the balls of your foot. So right hand will hold your foot, whichever position you're able to straight this leg. And now same thing, this arm will press the leg back as you press your chest towards the side, almost like a straight line from the toes to the fingertips, okay? So you can be with the strap right here, or if you're able to, you grab on the side of your foot. And remember, don't let this happen. Up to the sky, hip, crown of your head, sky, okay? And this is important because again, you're really using your core, really lengthening, and your twist becomes natural and safer for your spine. Slowly release the leg and just switch. So now the left leg stuck in, and I will show you the second option. So either the knee band in front of the chin or cross it, right? If you cross it, remember right hip should be grounded into earth and the feet, the sole of your uh, right foot should be grounded into the earth. Inhale, arms lift overhead, really trying to lengthen in the spine, pressing from the sit bones and on the exhale, left hand squeezing the right knee into the chest and the right hand reaching back. And here sometimes the sit bones get a little bit sore if it's your first practice. You can sit over uh, pillows Really thin pillows though, you don't want uh, too high pillows because then you might not be uh, fine balance, you might uh, get a little bit tricky to find the positions. You can relax the lower arm if you need to, but what I don't like about that is usually people try to bring the palm on the floor and they come towards the side, so if you're able to keep active as you straight the leg, or remember, use your strap if you need to. That's something that you want to try to keep everything active. One more big breath here. And slowly release. Maybe shake your legs side to side. Windshield your knees. Once you feel your hips a little bit more relaxed, you can slowly come into a comfortable seated position, whichever it is. Just like we started class, something that we can press the sit bones towards the floor and reach for the sky with the crown of our head. And on the exhale, just relax your shoulders back and down. Before we go on our way, let's release a little bit more of those shoulders. Inhale, lift the shoulders all the way up to the ears. Exhale, roll the shoulders back and down. Try to feel the mobility. Inhale, lift the shoulders. Exhale, roll them back and down. All those plank positions, chenurangas. So just try to release your shoulders before going on on your way. And our last inhalation together, the arms come all the way around the world as we reach for the sky and think other day that's coming into our lives. And on the exhale, the palms together, navigate towards the heart, always passing through the mind to keep it positive, towards the lips to say good things 
and into the heart to only keep the good memories. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nina and I hope seeing you again next time here at Nina Yoga Now YouTube channel. Namaste, Shivaya. Namaste, friends.